Hello everyone, it's Carrie, and in today's video I'm working on a Cyndi Lauper commission in the style of her When You Were Mine performance at the American Music Awards in 1985. This will be a full process video where I'll be showing the costume construction, the hair rooting and styling, the face up, and stay tuned to the end for the final looks. I'm starting with the pants and I'm using a pattern to trace onto the fabric. And in the beginning, I'm checking the fabric stretch to make sure there was it was going horizontally just in case I needed to have a little bit of give later. So I traced the pattern and two of each, and then I use this heat bond for the cuffs. When working on costumes this small, I like to show as little stitching as possible, so I use that in areas where you would actually see the stitching. So sometimes I'll use this heat bond, and then sometimes I just use the heat or bond tape. I like this heat bond for certain times because it has a piece of paper on one side so I can use, take some heat to it and then iron it on and then peel the paper and then iron on the other side, if that makes sense. <laughs> so once I stitch it all together, I just pull it right side out. And there's a little pair of pants that I use my little um, flat iron to iron them out. And there's a good fit. I like to put a snap on the back of most of the pants, if not like a little eye and hook and eye, I think is what it's called. So then I made a, a shirt from this faux fur and a vest from this cotton zebra fabric. So on to the reroute, I painted the part where I would root with yellow, yellow, and then some copper for the orange side. And then before I got started on the face up, I just thin out the hair a little bit by brushing it. And then onto the face up where I've coated her with four coats of Mr. Super Clear and started shaping her eyes. So the supplies that I use are in the description box below along with affiliate links. So if you click on those links to make purchases on Amazon, whether it's the product you clicked on or not, I get a small commission from that sale. So that's a great way to support my channel if you would like. So I'm using this Prismacolor in black to shape the upper eyelid. It doesn't show up as dark as the Derwent Black in my opinion, so later on I'll start using the Derwent Black when I want to build up that color even more. I made this Cindy doll a while back, but I wanted to space my videos. I had done several Cindy Loppers because she has such a huge, wonderful fan base, and I enjoy making every single one of them and hope to continue to making make more. But I spaced this one out a little bit. This one was a while back. And I've since got my favorite Faber-Castell Aqua Grip pencils that I like to use to do the fine lines with. At this point, I didn't have those, so I was using the next best thing, which is this Prismacolor. Let me know if you guys have any questions about those products in the comment section below. So I wanted to give her a little bit of that classic Cindy Lauper squint, so I'm shading around the upper, the lower lids. And Cindy has a very beautiful, soft, round face, so I do as little shading as possible. I don't want to give a too dramatic of shading or contouring because then it starts to look like she has a thinner face or or wrinkles so I'm using the pan pastels as usual for the lips and I just like custom mixed a couple of different colors So I do want to mention that I'm going to be doing a Q&A video for or frequently asked questions video. So um, I'll, that'll be in the next couple of weeks, I believe. 
So I'm going to leave a comment in the comment section below for anyone who has a question to reply. Just drop your questions under that comment and then I'll answer it in the upcoming video. So I'm looking forward to seeing all your questions, and but feel free to ask anything in the comment section below or shoot me an email or contact me on social media if you have a question that you don't want to share with the group. So now I'm adding some dark corners to the lips. Uh, to shape her lips, I carried the corners of her mouth a little bit further down than the mold of the doll. I'm darkening the upper lip a little bit more than the lower, and on the lower I do like a white highlight. In order to create this doll, I probably watched this video, I'm not exaggerating, it was probably like 50 times. It could have been more even, but I really wanted to get an idea of what she has a lot of little brooches and pins on her clothing and her hat, and so I just wanted to get an idea of what those look like so I could kind of mimic as many as I could into the costume. So, but I will tell you that's the only thing that I've watched that many times that I couldn't get enough of it. Usually you would get tired of things, but that performance just got better and better with every time I watched it. So if you haven't watched her 1985 performance of When You Were Mine at the American Music Awards, check it out on YouTube. <laughs> So now I'm using some pan pastel in like a brown color to give her her arch eyebrows. And I'm using this round brush that I've cut down into like a little stencil type brush. This is an old vintage eraser that I use. It has, it's a very hard eraser so if I need to erase a lot I use that, I think it's like for erasing typewriter ink, but it does erase ink. And then it'll also erase too many layers of the Mr. Super Clear if I don't be careful. But it's, it's really good for erasing if I need to erase deep. So I also want to mention that I have a few big things coming up. I'm working on a collection for my June Heroes convention in Charlotte. And then, um, so make sure that you're subscribed so you don't miss out on those videos because I'll be doing videos for those Heroes dolls or the theme that I'm working on. I'm also doing that Q&A video that I mentioned. And I'm working on a Patreon relaunch where I'll be sharing for my patrons what I think are some very valuable rewards there so make sure to follow me on social media so that you can be notified of those launch dates. So I'm on Facebook and Instagram mainly. And the links to those are in the description box. Also when I make those collections those dolls are always for sale if they don't sell at the convention all the dolls that are remaining will go up for sale. I first offer them out to my VIP mailing list, so if you're not on that and want to be, contact me on social media or shoot me an email asking me to be added to my email list. And I send the, the dolls that I have available out to that list first to give them first dibs, and then I'll list them on my Etsy shop. So again, make sure to let me know if you want to be on that email list or by sending me a direct message or email with your email address. And then the link to my Etsy shop is in the description box below. I do have a couple of dolls in there now, but like I said, after that collection for June, there will be, there should be another um, release in my Etsy. Although I will say that the last collection 
I think I only put like one or two dolls from that collection in Etsy. They sold very fast. Thank you guys so much. That was just wonderful. I couldn't believe how fast they sold. <laughs> So doing several layers of white for the eyes. And there I was using Derwent, which is my go-to for the laying out a lot of color. And I'm finding that the pearlescent black pan pastel works really good for blending out a smoky eye. Now I'm taking this Derwent metallic to give her a little bit of detail for her eyeshadow she has like these streaks on her eyes so I did use Derwent metallic for that and later on um, with the clients um, request I I made those a little bit shinier by adding some pearlescent paint and that really made them pop The Derwent Metallics, I love to use those to add a little bit of pop of color. They're kind of like the Ink Tents by Derwent, and they just, they, they're good for adding on top of, when, once you're almost done with your custom, with the face up, then if you want to add just a little bit of pop of color, they can add like a rich, shiny color too. I, I like to use them on the eyes, lips, eyeshadow, whatever. So while watching the video, I noticed her looking to the side a little bit, so I thought that it would be cute for her to give a side glance with her beautiful green eyes. This client was so wonderful to work with. I was so happy and had so much fun working on this doll. It's one of my favorite Cindy's that I've made. I just love the performance, so I was felt really excited to do this doll and create it. And it was the customer, the customer that I did this for was so nice, and just so I, it was just a great experience. And it seems like in those situations that my work turns out even better when I'm working with somebody that is so fun to work with. So onto the hair. So I'm giving it a little bit of water. This is um, alpaca yarn. The copper is about 70% alpaca yarn and then the yellow I think is 100%. So I'm wetting it down a little bit to give it a cut and I add a little bit of gel. This is just some plain unscented gel. It's just for holding the style. It isn't sticky. It isn't doesn't make it stiff. But I put it through just about all of the hairstyles that I do. And this one I just got at like a Dollar Tree or something. And I'm sectioning the hair out to give it a cut. So in this video, she didn't have the classic waffle shaved side of her head. She had her hair grown out a little bit, but the yellow side was short. So I'll be giving her some bangs and uh, one, one side short. 
So I cut the bangs a little bit longer than I um, than I want, just so I can gradually make them the right length. Better longer than too short. And then she has more than bangs. She has that, you know, 80s. It go the bangs go back a little bit. <laughs> you know, she's got like the top of her head short kind of mullet type thing there. <laughs> and then I cut the sides short as well. I mentioned my supplies earlier, but I forgot to mention that I do have a supplies video, so make sure to check that out in the iCard. I also have a playlist um, or playlists created of tutorials and everything kind of sectioned out into different types of videos, so make sure to check that out. I've been making videos for a few years now, so I have a lot of historical uh, videos there. So I'm just kind of going, giving her a layered cut all around the longer pieces. And then I'm taking my hair cutting razor to just razor out some of those edges to give it not such a blunt cut, more jagged or thinner at the ends. And then I'm also using my thinning shears to do that as well. In these shorter areas they're very thick so I'm going through those and removing a lot of the bulk with the thinning shears. One of my goals this year was to kind of level up on the hairstyling on my dolls. I used to put a lot less work into them and now I've been giving them more precision haircuts and just styling them a little bit more and using particular types of hair for to particular styles and I feel like it's really benefited the overall look. So just spending a little bit more time styling the hair really helps. So I just did some flat ironing the hair on the video. She's got it a little bit straighter than the natural wave that comes with this yarn after you unravel it. So I wanted to straighten it out a little bit and give her some little bit of curl at the bang. And after I put the doll back together, I style it a little bit more. Now putting all the pieces together, here are the pants with the embellishments and the hat and all of the pieces and bits. So if you guys like this video, I would love it if you gave it a thumbs up and subscribe. It really helps me a lot when you do that. Thank you so much for all the wonderful comments and don't forget to leave your questions for the Q&A video in the comment section below. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope everybody has a wonderful day. Please enjoy the the final look photos and thank you again for watching. Bye!